Good morning. Good morning. We are going to sing 519. <coughs> Excuse me, 519. 519. The latest thing out there that's just bugging me is a whole bunch of Baptists are trying to save America. Don't ask me what that's all about. But they're having, uh, they're having rallies and to save America. Anything I read in the Bible is let it go to pot and we want Jesus to come back. And, uh, and uh, by the way, how do you get all these preachers together? What's, what's the catch all to get them together? What's the hook and line? What's the, uh, the lure you throw out? Well, they're going to do what when they all get together <laughs> for the meeting? Eat. Yeah, lunch is provided. <laughs> it's, it's just atypical. Atypical. Thanks, but no thanks. They've got to they gotta leave their weapons at home. Their weapons? Their Bibles. Oh, I, I don't know where they get that from. I, I have no idea. Anything I read is uh, evil, evil men seducers shall wax worse than works, deceive and be decent. It, it says in Second Peter, hasten the day. Let's go for it. That's what it says. I, I don't know what they're reading, but they're they're going for it. It's people we know. It's I don't know what they're doing. But the, uh, we now we've got invited by the head honcho, and well, we're not showing up. And, and I don't care what they're serving for dinner. All right, the key characters, Hosea and Gomer. Father, bless now the lesson that we have and um, nourish the soul, the souls and saints here today, Father. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Hosea and Gomer. Uh, those are the, uh, you should know these things from um, uh, from being here for 30 years, you ought to know these things. Would you, uh, ladies, would you like to have a name, Gomer? Gomer? You know, Barney and... Uh, Gomer Pyle. Gomer Pyle. <coughs> Gomer and Goober. Golly. <laughs> Golly. <coughs> And, and by the way, what was he? What persuasion was that guy? Just in case you don't know. I don't want to speak ill of the dead. You don't want to speak ill of the dead? He was a homosexual. I don't know these things. I, I think in the end it was my mother would tell me these things. Don't you know he's a homosexual? I almost can't believe it. But, uh, but it's true. All right. Uh, chapters 1 through 3 uh, is describing an unfaithful wife, which would be Gomer. And it, it is to describe the nation of Israel, meaning an unfaithful 
people. They're not faithful. It's always a, a key word in the Christian walk. Grace, if it's grace, it's for salvation, and we are to remain faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. That's very, very important. Faithfulness to the end. In a marriage, faithfulness to the end. Till, uh, my, my wife's uncle, he would say, till when? Do you remember what he would say? I don't know what it means, but he would say it. Till the last dog is hung. Remember that? He would say that, till the last dog is hung. Anybody ever hear that expression? I haven't. But well, your uncle would say it. I would assume he meant being faithful until the last dog is hung. Faithfulness. Uh, fa faithful at work, faithful at your station, uh, faithful uh, wherever it is that, and especially for a Christian, where God has assigned you. Uh, in the lost world, they're looking for faithfulness. People who are going to show up. By the way, who shows up in a business? <clears throat> Doesn't matter if there's only one man there or uh, it's a shop of 10,000. Who shows up? The boss. That's why he is the boss. Is because it's faithfulness. Not a quitter. Not a quitter. Uh, but in this, uh, this is describing using uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, wife of Hosea as an illustration to show the unfaithfulness of Israel. It's uh, the, the, the Hosea's life is an object lesson, just like in Ezekiel 4, 5 and Ezekiel 12. What were the object lessons? We've been through Ezekiel recently. What are, just name off some of the object lessons. Ezekiel 4, Ezekiel 5, I, would, I don't know, remember what is Ezekiel 12. What are the object lessons of, in Ezekiel? What, what were the illustrations that he gives? He does chalk art on a tile and he draws the, uh, the, uh, not bombardment. We wall off the city. The uh, what's the word? Barricade. Like a barricade. It, it, it's the same thing, you know. Where they wall it off, and you, you know they're going to starve them out. He uh, he takes the hair. What did he do with the hair after he shaved his head? The illustration. He divides it into what? What was the portions he divided into? Thir in thirds. One would die, one would be taken captive, and uh, the one was captive, one would, uh, was dying, and the other, um, I forget what the, happened the other, and there was a little bit left over. The little bit of hair that was left over is called the what? What's always remaining? The remnant. The re it's like a carpet. You know, they have leftover carpet here and they have it stored at the carpet house. It's called the remnant. It's a little bit that's left over. You can go over there and get a, a bargain on it to, to uh, uh, carpet your porch or a small bedroom or something. It's called a remnant. And so a little bit of hair that's left is the remnant. The other was he's, he's cooking with using a human dung. He says, I've never defiled myself. And he went and used, uh, was permitted to use uh, uh, manure from cattle and so on. Uh, he dug in a wall. Remember, and he takes out the household goods. You may say, what a waste of time. But it was all for signs to the nation for them to watch <coughs> of what was going to happen, that they're going into captivity. So Ezekiel does the same thing with these illustrations. Okay, he marries Gomer, who is a whore, Hosea 1, 2. It is, shows the relationship of Israel to God. Getting in the word, you know, a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredoms departing from the Lord. That they, that they have departed from the Lord. And so Israel, uh, God's wife, is Israel. 
what is Jesus' wife is the church. We are not married. We are espoused. It's an engagement. We are engaged to the Lord. And then the great wedding feast, the wedding takes place after the rapture. We will be married then to the Lord. And, uh, and different people in the Bible play different roles. What does... Uh, what is John the Baptist called in this relationship? Well, just to give you an example. He is what to the bridegroom? Anybody remember? Friend. He's the friend of the bridegroom. So he plays the best man. And so on. The virgins in Psalm 40, 45, they become the girls that are the attendants to the bride. They're not all the, everybody's not the bride. Everybody's not the church. There's the Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, and they're not all the bride. And so at a wedding, everybody plays, and then those that come to the great wedding feast, those are also saved, but they're not part of the bride. They are in attendance at the wedding. Would be like Old Testament saints. So it shows the relationship to God that they were unfaithful. They departed from the Lord. They stepped out on him. Verse, chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed. <coughs> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because... Thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. See, thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. They forgot the law. Now we're going to go to the law. Lack of knowledge, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 24 and look that up. In fact, why don't we just go there right away and have that over with. I got in the car today and uh, was waiting for the wife, 24-1. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, it has come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement, give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. A bill of divorcement. That, that is according to the law. So God's going to give her a bill of divorcement. Um, and by the la lack of knowledge, it seems like there's such a great lack of knowledge. I was... Uh, whipping this around before everybody got here, this whip. And uh, Joe made a mention about, I bought two different guns. And what did you call that on the muzzle? You, you had a term, there's a term for it. Muzzle velocity. Mu the muzzle of velocity? It's a term, muzzle velocity. Muzzle velocity. That's the speed of the projectile that leaves the muzzle. All right, uh, and it could be a variety of speeds depending on the power that's behind it. The muzzle velocity and what that causes and does. Well, I'd never heard that term, so it was lack of knowledge. I got in the car and I thought to myself, could a millennial get somewhere without a GPS today? I mean, we never had GPS when we were kids. And, uh, we had a compass. Uh, I never used a compass. And I was in Boy Scouts. Man, I could never figure that out. We were always lost with that compass. So in the uh, car, when you're traveling to Colorado or California, wherever you go, what do you got surrounded in the car? Kids. <laughs> kids. What is in the car with you? You're trying to get somewhere. Oh. Maps. You got these maps. You got an address. You got a map. We always made it. We never seemed to have any problem. And when you got to the fork in the road, you always kind of figured out which way you were supposed to go. Now, some people can't figure north and south. They don't, they don't have a direction at all. So it won't matter if they have a map or anything. They need the GPS telling them to turn left and right. I, I can see the advantage of that. All you need is the sun and a, and a, and a watch. That's true. They go by the shadow. Yeah, but people people are going to go by that. They're not going to go. I mean, can, can they make it? There's a lack of knowledge today. 
And on the way in, I couldn't remember the speed of sound. I didn't know, I didn't know, I couldn't remember. I thought it was, is it 700, 800? It seemed like it was seven or 800. But the speed is, is 700 and some miles per hour. Well, I don't want miles per hour, I want per second. And I, I said to Lil in the car, I said, I don't want to do, do that and do the math while I'm driving. We're going to have an accident. It's just a little uh, division problem. And I didn't want to do that. And, um, and, and I have a reason uh, t uh, today to, to want to know that. In, anyway, uh, there, there's such a lack of knowledge, it seems, today that, um, and here, lack of knowledge, as it says in, in verse 6, a lack of knowledge, they have rejected knowledge, and they forgot the law of God. They just have forgotten. All right, the names of Gomer's sons. Uh, Gomer has these six sons. One, one, the first one, it means judgment or scattered. And then the next one, I, I don't necessarily want to pronounce it, means no mercy. And loemi means ye are not my people. I mean, it was total rejection. And then apparently there's going to be re restoration. Yes, she has three more sons gathered together by people and mercy. So there's always forgiveness and restoration to teach that. Uh, Hosea 2.5. She could not take being a preacher's wife. For their mother hath, 2.5, played the heart. She hath conceived them. She that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. I mean, she, she goes, she goes for the, the do re me, man. She goes right for the money. She could not take being a preacher's wife. There are, there are uh, wives that leave, they leave their husbands and they can't take it, they can't take, take it. I have, I've known people preachers that their wife leaves and they don't want they uh, man we had them leave the church down the street here what she said I'm not going to stay here anymore she, she, she stormed out stormed out and I mean and I left them not that they got a divorce but she didn't want any any part of the church anymore not to say she got out of church but she didn't want to be in that church and it, it's just too bad it will make you miserable. Sin will do that. Verse 6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up the way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. All right, this hedge, the thorn, and the wall, she can't find her way around. She becomes miserable. Joy is gone. Then she'll follow after her lovers, but she'll not overtake them. She shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband then was it better with me than now? So they lose their joy in the, uh, 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 she said, well, man, I'll go back to my first husband, to my husband. Verse 15, restore your joy, your hope, and your song. Uh, everybody needs it uh, with salvation. Uh, he speaks comfortably to her, verse 14 and 15. You know, if you're gonna compromise and come to an agreement, uh, you know, a marriage is a, it's, it's a two-way street. There's got to be a, a compromise. By the way, uh, who's our, who is our boss as a Christian? Jesus. Jesus. Does Jesus make a mistake? It's his way or the highway. He doesn't make a mistake. So there's no reason for him to compromise. He's, he, there's no sin in him. It's, it's when the husband's sin and wife's sin that you can have problems. Verse 15, and I will give her vineyards from thence in the valley of Achor and a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in, as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Shall be at, the, at that day, saith the Lord, 
that thou shalt call me Ishi and, and shall call me no more Be'elai. All right, so those names, uh, Ishi, uh, Ishi means lover and Be'elai. I don't have a de- definition of it. It, it. it means my Lord? That's what it says in Soul That's what mine says too. And what does it say about Ishai? Of my husband, and and shall call me no more my lord. I don't know. I don't know. But there is going to be restoration. By the way, uh, what uh, what age group doesn't seem to know what's going on around them, and they seem to be happy all the time? Children. Children. They, uh, uh, and I grew up with kids in, in, uh, and where I went to school for grade school, it was probably one of the poorest sections in Cleveland, in the, in the Cuyahoga County area. And I remember one kid, he said they had a bathtub. I don't even know if they had running water in the house. And it's not far from here, it's just, right, it's in Bedford Heights. He said uh, uh, he, they'd be sitting there. All those, all those homes have been bulldozed and removed. And what highway goes through there now? 271. 271. All that comes out. They pick those areas and they clear it out. Uh, it, notice it, where where does the freeway not go? Bratton. Bratton. Where else? It, it does. Huh? Shaker. Shaker. Shaker Heights. Those Jews are not going to have that freeway go there. It's going to go everywhere else, but. But through the poor area, you know, they have eventually cleared out. Well, for sport, he'd have his friends over, and uh, the rat would be coming up through the uh, drain pipe in the uh, bathtub, and they would sit there with a BB gun. They were having a ball with rats in the house, waiting for it to pop its head off, have it pop its head up and pump them off. <laughs> yes, uh, kids. Uh, uh, kids can have make fun. They'll they'll play with the uh, they'll play with rats. Uh, chapter three, verses one and two. In fact, uh, why don't we we I want to finish this up next week. We're gonna just because of the time. We're gonna stop there on twenty two, and uh, I. Uh, we have this movie and the kids are making a living in this movie by gathering roots. Has anybody ever heard of making a living that way? Anybody ever hear of that? I mean, these are hillbillies. They gather moss. Pardon? In West Virginia, they gather moss. They gather moss. Why moss? Uh, well, there's a saying, uh, uh, you don't gather moss. What, what, what is the saying, uh, you don't gather moss, indicates what kind of a man are you? A roamer. You're a roamer. You're a traveler. Only a log laying there in the woods gathers moss. That, that is a saying, gathering moss. Sell it for I wonder why. Well, in this thing, the kids are making a living gathering Roots. What do you do with those roots? Filter water. Pardon? Filter water. Nope. Do re? You have to make money. Do re me. Who do you sell it to? Farmers? A pharmacist. Oh. And they're they're gathering roots for selling it, and they're looking for specific plants. I had my my cousins did that. I mean, we're talking poor people. We used to drink. You want to go out in the woods and look for roots? We look for sassafras to make tea. Well, no, not for tea. This is this is chemicals for diseases. Yeah. And they probably put them all out of business. How did they? Put, how did these pharmacies put them all out of business? Illegal. No, they probably make synthetics. Chemistry, the chemists figured out how to make something that's similar to or 
just as effective. It puts them all out of business. I mean, these people are dirt, dirt poor. I, I think about going down there. We would go down there, and they would have um, uh, half the house, half the house is occupied by animals. They seal the house up. Half the house is, is occupied by wild animals. They have deer hanging everywhere. This is after the incident, after the kids and the wife are gone. Very religious, they're very religious. They end up in a, uh, they, uh, she ends up where, where uh, uh, battered women go with their kids. Awful, just, just horrible. And then the one story that was told when we were there that he recently saw a, uh, he said they, he saw a cat, he said that cat was all of nine feet, counting the tail. This is in Kashak. The cat was nine feet what? Well, what, what kind of a cat would be nine oh, feet long? Oh, counting the tail. I thought it was a domesticated cat. No, well, what kind of a cat is that? A mountain lion. Are there mountain lions in Ohio? He, he, he claims, man, there it was. Saw it in a street light. They actually had a street light there. In Coshocton. Not south where there's a It's south. You're getting close to West Virginia. There's hills and caves there. And he claims they're the mountain lions. Yeah, in Ohio. And that's not that all that long ago. Not that all that long. Uh, we would see a, uh, an, an outbuilding, a big building, filled with canned food. If you ate it, what would you die from? Botulism. Does that happen in a church where half the church dies? It does. It would be on Paul Harvey. They open up that oh, those jars, and Aunt Martha brought her stuff, and they ate those green beans, and half the churches and half the other church didn't eat it, and they all they all died. Yeah, it just touches your lips, your your toast. Preaching at fifteen.